Hi you guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Shamira if you are new to my channel. In this video, I have another medical coding, what it's like in real life. This is going to be video or episode six. If you have not seen one through five, I will have a link either in the comments or in the description box for you to check those out. I do have a complete playlist of them so you can literally watch one through six. Um, if you are interested in getting a copy of this operative note that we are going to go through, you can get yours on my stand store. I'll have that link um, down below as well. It is a free PDF that you can download and print out at home if you want to write on it, highlight, whatever. Um, it is available. So let's go ahead and jump right in. This section here, the assessment and plan of this um, operative note is actually something that I copied from an office visit. So this is what the provider had documented in the office and then indications and in down is the actual operative note. So the patient would have came, came into the um, office and I'm an OBGYN coder. A lot of the operative notes and office visits are going to be related to OBGYN, so the female genital system in your CPT book. Um, this patient came in, she has a large cystal seal and a smaller rectal seal. So the provider is recommending for a AMP repair, which is an anterior and posterior repair. She's also having some urinary leakage consistent with mixed incontinence and needs urody urodynamics, possibly a TVT. So the urodynamics they did in the office and um, after they did the procedure, they are gonna go ahead and set up this TVT, which is a um, tension-free vaginal tape. And for anyone that is interested in OBGYN, what I think would be very helpful is if you start as you are practicing, doing practice exams or things like this, is if you write down diagnosis, co um, diagnosis codes, like get a index card or tear up a line piece of paper, that way you have front and back. What you should practice is writing down diagnosis on one side and then put on the opposite side the type of procedure or treatment that they are going to do for that disease. That way when you sit for your COBGC exam or any exam, you can do this with like if you like orthopedics, like for example if somebody were to break their finger or something like that or have some type of fracture, you can put on one side that fracture and then the other side the treatment option for that. That way when you are sitting for your exam and you see these diagnoses, you already have an idea of what they may do. And I kind of like thinking it, thinking of it that way because it no longer feels like you're reading Chinese. So when I see somebody with a cystal seal and a rectal seal, I already know, well, in order to repair a cystal seal, which is the bladder, um, is prolapsed, that would be the anterior portion of the vagina because if you also know your anatomy, you know that the bladder sits on top of the vagina and then the rectal seal is behind it. So this A and P repair now should make sense because they are repairing the anterior portion of the vagina, which is where the cystal seal is, and then they're going to repair the posterior portion of the vagina because that's where the rectal seal is. So practice um, writing down uh, complications and then the treatments on the back so that way as you are practicing um, with your practice exams or whatever you already have an idea on what they're actually going to do. So let's get in here in the indications. The patient was admitted to the hospital with a brief history of vaginal pressure. A pelvic exam revealed findings of cystal seal and rectal seal. Urodynamic testing revealed stress, urinary incontinence, secondary to a hypermobile urethra. The patient now presents for anterior posterior coporphy with sling operation. Um, also, medical terminology is great because you will know for coporphy, that means vaginal repair. So we have our pre-op and post-op diagnosis codes. It looks like they are the same here. And you'll want to always review your diagnosis codes to make sure they don't exclude each other. These do not. So um, the midline cystal seal and the rectal seal, this would be our diagnosis for the vaginal repair. And then the mixed stress and urge incontinent, urinary incontinence will be for our TVT, which is the sling operation. So now, Getting into our procedure details. It says here, after general anesthesia was induced, the patient was prepped and draped in normal sterile fashion in the dorsal lobotomy position. The vaginal cuff was grasped with two Alice clamps and injected with half percent marcaine with epinephrine. A transverse incision was made at the vaginal cuff and dissection was then carried out 
opening the anterior vaginal wall and the midline. The fascia was then dissected off the mucosa bilaterally. The fascia was then brocaded in the midline using stitches of 2-0 polysorb. The vaginal cosa was tr then trimmed and reapproximated with a running stitch of 2-0 polysorb. The bladder was then drained. The suburethral area, okay, so right here, we are moving on to the suburethral area, which is going to be that, um, that sling operation that when we're using the TVT Abrevo, and we will get into that. So this section here, let me write it. Where is it? Here to here and up is going to be our anterior repair. Now we're getting into the sling operation. The subureter area was grasped with two Alice clamps injected with half marcaine with epinephrine. A subureter incision was then made and men's involved scissors used to dissect to the inferior pubic rami bilaterally. The TVT guide and needles were placed to and through the obturator internus muscle on both sides and brought through the skin. The tape was then tightened underneath the urethra by placing a myo scissor between urethra and the tape. The needles were then cut, the sheath was removed, suture introducer and remaining tape was removed. The midline mark was cut and removed. The subureethral area was grasped and reapproximated with a 2 O polysorb suture. Incisions approximated with 4 O polysorb. The posterior repair was then approached by grabbing the hymenal ring on both sides. So right here is where they finished. Before this line here was where they um, finished up the TVT. Now we are moving on to the posterior repair. It says here, uh, we were here. The posterior vaginal wall was then injected with half percent marcaine with epinephrine. The posterior vaginal wall was opened in the midline and the fascia was dissected off mucosa bilaterally. The fascia was then reapproximated using a running stitch of zero vicral. The vaginal cosa was then trimmed and reapproximated a running stitch of zero vicral. A foveate catheter was placed in the bladder and the vaginal plaque was placed in the vagina. The patient was then taken um, to recovery in a stable condition. Our findings were a cystocele, a rectocele, and a hypermobile urethra, which was the exact same thing they mentioned um, here in the indications, and our diagnosis are here. Except this is for a stress and urge urinary incontinence, this N 3946 The hypermobile urethra is actually, I think it's N... We will get to the diagnosis part. I'm not even going to write it down just yet because I want to show you guys my ICD-10-CM. So, um, what I would do is I would highlight, like you guys can go in and highlight um, the different uh, procedures. So, I'm just going to do this quickly. Okay, so we have that in orange. And then I'm going to do the suburethral area in yellow. And then I'm going to do this posterior repair in orange as well. And you'll see why in just a second once I pull out my CPT book. Alright, so here's my CPT book. I'm just going to jump to the female genital system. I know normally I would start in the back, but I want you guys to also get familiar. Hang on a second, I had a sneeze. <coughs> no, it did. There it was. Okay. Um, I want you guys to get used to um, just knowing where to go in your CPT book. You shouldn't always have to feel like you have to go in the back into the index in order to find your code. We know these surgeries that or these procedures that was just done was a part of the female genital system. So that is where we should be. Pay attention to your headings. So here we are with vulva, perineum, and choritis. We know we didn't do anything on there. Um, vagina we have next so here we are in vagina what did we do we did an anterior posterior repair and then we did a sling operation as well so you will see let me make sure I have my full book in here so you will see vagina 
and then you see these subheadings, incision, destruction, excision, introduction, repair. We did a vaginal repair. We did an anterior and posterior repair. So here on the side here, we see anterior coporphy repair of a cystal seal. Then we have posterior coporphy repair of a rectal seal. And then we have 57260 for combined anterior posterior coporphy, including a, a, a cystourethroscopy when performed. So our code for that anterior posterior repair is going to be this 57260, where it says combined anterior posterior coporphy, including cystourethroscopy when performed. We didn't do the um, cystourethroscopy, so we don't have to worry about that, but it says when it was performed. It doesn't have to be performed. Um, but this is going to be our first code. Then I'm gonna turn the page and we're gonna look for our next repair, which was the um, TVT, the sling operation. And then we're just gonna come down here to sling operation for stress incontinence. And it's gonna be 57288. If this was done um, laparoscopically, then we will be looking at 51992, but it was not. We did this um, while the patient was in the dorsal lithotomy position. That's why it's also important to know um, I think they're like your body planes and how they are positioned on the table. So dorsal lithotomy position, always have that picture in mind so you know how the patient is placed on the table. Um, so our CPT codes are going to be 57260 and 57288. Now we need to um, look up our diagnosis codes, which we really don't have to because we have the midline cystal seal and the rectal seal. Those two codes are going to go with the um, anterior and posterior repair. And then we have the mixed stress and urge urinary incontinence, which is N3946. So I have my book here. And N3946, which is the mixed incontinence, the urge and stress incontinence, but there was also the hypermobility of the urethra, which is N3641. And we see here it says use additional code to identify associated urinary stress incontinence, which is the N39.3, which is here. So because we have a mix of urge and stress, we don't need to worry about reporting this N39.3. But what we can do is report this N3641, and then we'll also report N39.3. 3946. So we'll have N3641 and N39, I think it was 46, no? Yes. So these two codes we are going to have with the sling operation, that's a terrible arrow. <laughs> and then um, our cystal seals, which were both um, the anterior and posterior is going to go to that one. And that is how I would code this operative note. I hope you guys um, enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned something. Remember, you can get this operative note on my stand store. Also, my, um, I almost forgot, my, OBGYN coding guide, the one where I included all my notes that helped me during my transition to an OBGYN coder. It is no longer going to be on sale um, as of April 30th at midnight. You may be able to still get it on sale um, May 1st, early in the morning before I um, have it at $16.99 going forward. But right now you can get it for $14.99. I almost forgot to mention that. Also, do not forget to create those flashcards for my aspiring OBGYN coders. You need to make those flashcards because 
once you have an idea or once you have an understanding of complications that you know the females have you already know what the provider may do to treat those complications so practice 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 and you will get there bye guys